Turn your Bibles, if you would, please. I want to continue to expound on Psalms chapter 23 for the next few moments. Psalms chapter 23. We've been looking at bits and pieces of this the last few weeks. Last week we looked at verse 5, Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. This week I want to finish verse 5 where David the shepherd says, Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. I want to expound on that for the next few moments. Thou anointest my head with oil. It's important for us to understand if you remember, if you've ever heard ministry of this before. This is the time now for the sheep. It is summertime and it is, listen closely now, this is, this is the time of year when it's supposed to be the most prosperous for the herd. The, the green grasses of the mountain plateaus, the table, they call it the tabletops, and uh, they're feasting. It's supposed to be the happiest time, the most mom momentous time between the, the sheep and the shepherd, their relationship. And if you stop and think about it, that's kind of the reality for us as human beings. You know, summertime, you take vacations and it's supposed to be the funnest and you go camping or you do whatever. You're with friends or family and you create memories and, and it's just so much fun. And, and the laughter and the, the enjoyment that you have and, you know, and, and it's kind of time off or time away and, and it's time to play and enjoy oneself and, and just kind of enjoy the kind of the year-long labor of, of whatever it might be. And, and uh, that's the way it's supposed to be for us as, as people. But if you also know, sometimes in the middle of summertime, in the middle of that most prosperous time, when it's supposed to be the funnest, it can actually be the most tormentous. This last summer when we were doing our Wednesday night fellowships, and the last one we had in the middle of August, we were out here in, in front of the church, and we were eating, and we had some fried chicken and different things, and, and I swear there was some yellow jacket nest around here someplace. And as soon as we uncovered the fried chicken and, and you know, and some of the other foods, a thousand yellow jackets descended upon us. And I mean, it was just, it was torturous, right? There's no way we could enjoy ourselves. And we're swatting, and you know, and ladies, my wife is screaming, and you know, and Vonda's rolling on the ground trying to rid herself of the yellow jackets, you know, and, and Pastor Charlie looks like he forgot his medication and he's walking around like this and swatting the thing, you know, and it's just horrible. And we're supposed to sit there and enjoy ourselves and eat food and, you know, bask in the, in the pleasures of fellowship one with another and, and the whole time we're just being tormented. Can't enjoy anything. In fact, it's just horrendous. And that's what happens to the herd, he anointeth my, my head with oil. What that means is the shepherd, because at that time of summer, that time of year, mites and bugs and flies of all sorts and kinds would, would descend upon sheep, and especially upon their face, and one particular kind of, of a nose mite. And, and you know the story, those of you who are familiar with it, and, and these, these flies, these nose flies, will get inside the, the moist, uh, membranes of the sheep's nostrils and plant eggs and when the, the eggs would hash, hatch and the larvae would then migrate up into the brain of the sheep and it would literally drive the sheep crazy. Uh, so much so that they would thrash their heads around and, and even at point in times it was too severe that sheep would actually take their heads and beat their heads against rocks to try to rid themselves of these pestilence and these mites and they can't feed, they can't feed at all. It's supposed to be a prosperous time. Instead, they're being tormented. Even to the point where that some sheep would actually kill themselves. Trying to rid themselves of these tormentors. And so what the shepherd would do, he would take oil. And in that oil, he would take a mixture of sulfur and other spices and so forth. And he would pour it upon the sheep's head. And then the shepherd would wipe it upon the face of the sheep. And make sure that he wiped it within the nostrils of the sheep and all around the mouth. 
And it was that anointing of the oil that kept at bay all the pestilence. The flies couldn't come and land and plant their eggs. And the flies couldn't come and torment their eyes and their ears because they had been anointed with the fresh oil of what we would call today the oil of the Holy Spirit, the oil of God. And folks, we as Christian people, we can get like that sometimes. We can be tormented at a time when, when we're supposed to be eating and feasting at the very height of, of life, of our spiritual walk with God and our, our spiritual fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the church and with the body and so forth. We can find ourselves being tormented by pests. We can find ourselves being tormented by things that aggravate us. We can be tormented by things that, that we disagree with. And then we, we find ourselves like sheep. We beat our heads up against rocks. And we become complainers. And we become dissenters. And we become bitter. And, 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 and the whole time we're being tormented by forces outside. And trying to get rid of those out external forces that are tormenting us. And tormenting me. And to try to get rid of them we... We harm the people around us and we hurt people that are closest to us. And so for the shepherd to take care of his flock and to bring peace so that the flock could dwell in peace and could feast and eat and prepare themselves for the coming fall and then the lean winter months, he would anoint their heads with oil. And folks, let me tell you something, Christian people, we need to have our heads anointed with oil. Yes, amen. I need my head anointed with oil. You need your head anointed with oil. And we need this pestilence to stay at bay. And, you know, as a, as a shepherd, as a pastor, sometimes, you know, the, the shepherd would have to take the sheep and discipline the sheep because they would, wouldn't fall, wouldn't line up and they wouldn't, they wouldn't help themselves to become obedient under the shepherd's guidance and under the shepherd's soft touch. And, they would, they would rebel and they would try to go their own way. I'm sad to say that sometimes as a pastor, we have to talk to some people and minister to our flocks at times and say, these type of pestilence will not be allowed. Division will not be allowed. This kind of talk, this kind of behavior, these kind of attitudes are not allowed. And there needs to be correction. There needs... Our heads need to be anointed with the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit so the tormentors that are causing us to behave in a certain manner will cease and will stop. That's not allowed in the flock. Can you say amen? amen? It's not allowed in the body of Christ. And we take measures to assure that that becomes remedy just as the shepherd would with the great sheep. So he would anoint their heads with oil. Now there's a couple things that I want to continue to enlighten us about. For us as Christian people, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the oil for us, it, it gives us the ability to persevere. Sometimes to persevere as an individual, you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that anointing is in reference to the oil of the Holy Spirit. And that anointing helps us to persevere. Paul said it in his word. He said it here. If you'll just not faint. The Lord said that my children ought to always pray and not faint. Pray and don't faint. Let your heads be anointed with oil. Okay. Persevere. Well, I don't agree with what's going on. But you know what? That's really not your place to agree or disagree. Your place is to be a part of the herd. Your place is to fall under line when it comes time for the shepherd to say, fall in line, come to the altar, and then let your head be anointed with the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit. We come to the altar and we ask God to anoint our heads with the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. You see, that's up to you. You and I, we've got to do that. We've got to desire that. We have to require that for ourselves. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit helps us to persevere. When others would faint, when others would quit, when others would find themselves falling short of the goal. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brings that ability to continue to persevere. Settle down. Last week we talked about it. He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Lots of enemies around. Wolves, lions, tigers, roaring, howls, all kinds of enemies. 
And now there's bugs and mites and pestilence and all sorts of things that would cause a sheep to be disoriented and to not feed in the blessings of the shepherd. So it allows us to help us to persevere. And there's one last point that, that there's a disease among sheep that's called the scab. And maybe those of you that deal with cattle, maybe you understand that term. But it's called the scab. And sheep will get this disease. It's very contagious. And it's caused by a certain type of fly. And the fly will, will bite the sheep. And the sheep will contract this disease called the scab. And so what happens is sheep, then they rub their heads with other sheep. And, and you know, and, and because they're part of the herd. And, and that's part of the way of communicating and with one another. And, and knowing one's place in the herd. And all those fellowshipping, so to speak. And if I have the scab and, and I rub heads with somebody else... It's very contagious. That next person is going to get the scab. Or if they have scab and they rub their heads up with mine and we rub together, now I'm going to contract scab. And if scab's not taken care of, eventually it will kill the sheep. And so the shepherd has to look for this. Point being is this, is that many times folks will rub our heads up against with somebody else that we shouldn't be rubbing our heads up against with. We'll be listening to somebody talk that we shouldn't be listening to the talk. We're maybe hanging out with somebody that we shouldn't be hanging out with. We're listening to somebody who says something that's detrimental. We're in a place where we shouldn't be. And before you know it, you got scabbed. Before you know it, we got scabbed. And guess what the pastor has to do? Guess what the shepherd has to do? Has to call the flock to the altar and say, come and ask and seek the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. You need to be healed of your scab. I need to be healed of my scab. And if we come and if we yield ourselves under the presence of the Holy Spirit, God is faithful to heal us. But if we rebel in self-righteousness, if we rebel in pride, if we rebel in rebellion, the scab will continue, and before you know it, the ultimate takes place, and death comes knocking on one's door. Yeah. And lastly, concerning the anointing of the Holy Spirit, He anointeth my head with oil. When the scab is taken care of, and the nose flies are taken care of, and the mosquitoes, and all these things are taken care of, all these Tormentors can now no longer torment the herd because they've been, their heads have been anointed with fresh oil. Now they can feast and eat. And folks, let me apply it to us as Christian people. Now our souls can be a total peace. Our souls need to be at peace. He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And before all the mites and the flies start biting and coming to me and anoint my head with oil. I'm here to tell you, my soul is at peace. And I'm feasting at the table of the shepherd that has prepared for me to eat. Can you say amen? Folks, your soul needs to be at peace. I don't care where you are. And there isn't anybody here listening to me either in this congregation or on the internet, that is in a place or ever been in a place, or going to be in a place that's been more tormenting or more fraught with potential disaster than this preacher who's preaching to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not 26-year-old, some 26-year-old graduate out of Bible college who has no life experiences and trying to encourage his congregation by something that a professor told him he should say. You're listening to a preacher that's been through it. You're listening to a preacher that's caused that break. You're listening to a preacher that swam over that lake. You're listening to a preacher that's been to hell and back. You're listening to a preacher that's looked right smack dab into the eyes of death. You're listening to a preacher that knows what it's like to be sick. You're listening to a preacher that knows what it's like to be healthy. You're listening to a preacher that knows what it's like to have no peace. And you're listening to a preacher that declares today his soul is 
is at peace. Wow. Then he says at the end of verse 5, my cup runs over. You see, that's what it's supposed to be like. The Lord said, if you come unto me, you'll thirst never more. 